Hey guys, it's right here. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you my personal overclock for my 1066 gigabyte version. This overclock will only work for the 6 gigabyte version. So if you have a 1066 gigabyte version, you're going to want to use these settings as well. So I can actually, I've managed to push the system a little bit more than this or my graphics card a little bit more than this, but I don't want to do it because I've realized and come to the realization that it caused a lot of instability in games and caused a lot of games to crash. Some games don't crash and different things like that. So these are the settings that are completely stable that have caused me no issues for the past three days that I have ran tests on and gamed on. So let's go ahead and jump straight into this. So I'm in a... And MSI Afterburner, you want to set the power limit to 116. You want to set the temp limit to 92. Don't worry, your temp, your graphics card is not going to hit 92 degrees. Okay, all right, it's not going to. And then you want to go right here to core clock. You want to set that to plus 150. I find that if I go any higher than 150, like I said, it causes instability in games and causes them to crash. And then next, we want my core clock to be plus 500. So I'm actually running with my graphics card right now my core clock or memory is at 2113 so 2113 alright in total and then for your fan speed you're actually going to want to set your fan speed to a custom fan speed that is not too loud for you but actually makes your system really cool so I have mine at 50 percent uh, fan speed and I find that there is no fan noise whatsoever and it keeps my system in the 60s and 70s like my graphics card in the 60s and 70s of temperatures as opposed to hitting like 80s and etc and stuff like that okay so overall once you have all this done you go ahead and hit the save button and then you want to click on one through five profile here go ahead and click on whichever profile you want so then next time when you start up MSI Afterburner you can just click on profile number one say if you saved it to that and then hit apply and it applies it do not check apply overclocking at system startup due to the reason being that there have been updates and stuff for programs in the past that have caused conflicting issues with overclocking on graphics cards and has caused computers to blue screen so I just leave that off and every time you start up your computer just manually start up MSI Afterburner click on the profile and go ahead and hit apply so now that I'm done talking about that and showing you guys overall how to apply the overclock, let me show you some benchmarks on some games and overall the FPS increase that we got. So let's go and jump straight into the benchmark screenshots, guys. Let's get straight into it. So first of all, we have Haven with a non-overclock, the just stock standard, okay, that you can buy. We have no overclock and we get an average FPS of 61, a maximum of 126, and a score of 1543. With the overclock that I showed you guys and with the overclock that I showed you guys how to apply, we have a total FPS of 68, a maximum of 138, and a score of 1723, 1725, sorry. Now keep in mind, my memory for the uh, 1060 is actually running at 20, 2113 currently with the overclock when I apply the overclock to everything, okay? So going on to the next thing, I ran Bioshock Infinite at Ultra on the DX11 one. So the DX11 Ultra at 1080p highest settings that I can, okay, at the maximum settings that I can. And non-overclocked, we have an average FPS of 135 and a maximum of 70, 272. And then overclocked with the settings that I showed you guys, we have a average FPS of 145 and a maximum FPS of 560 nine so that's pretty ridiculous pretty awesome okay going on to the next thing we have middle earth shadow of mordor middle earth shadow of mordor everything under the options was all set to the highest quality settings except except for motion blur motion blur was completely disabled and turned off because i don't like motion blur so that's just personally me so the non overclock for middle earth shadow of mordor at ultra settings 1080p we have an average fps of 96 and a maximum of 140 the overclocked benchmark for middle earth shadow of mordor we have an average FPS of 105 and a maximum of 155. So overall, that was a pretty good overclock right there that we managed to get in middle or shadow of Mordor. Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is Metro. So I ran Metro's test three times, okay? Three times non-overclocked and three times overclocked. All of these tests, by the way, except for Metro, every single one of these tests, even for Haven, you know, and everything else, were all ran three times, okay? All right? All of them were ran three times, all right? And Metro was ran, well, I think I ran Shadow of Mordor about four times, but that was in total. So we have Shadow of Mordor four and everything else three, all of it was ran three. So for Metro, we have non-overclocked. 
we have an average FPS of 74 and a maximum of 256. With the overclock that I showed you guys, we have an average FPS of 92 and a maximum of 282. That is definitely worth it. So overall, there you guys go. I hope my benchmark helps you guys and I hope, you know, my benchmark numbers and my overclocking helps you guys with your 1060s and get you guys a little bit more performance out of them. Uh, some of these are actually pretty man, like the whole Haven thing only gave me like what, seven more. But in total wise, for gaming wise, we're getting a total of about, I would give or say about a 10 FPS increase for most games. Actually, pretty much all the games except for Shadow of Mordor. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.